Hi, this is PR Frank, and today we're going to continue our study of HTML and CSS in a text editor. We're using a text editor called Brackets. And we're going to take a look at divs, IDs, and classes today. These are very useful in doing some custom work within your HTML page and adding some CSS for styling. So, so far, in our page, we have used some elements that are defined in HTML5. We've used body, header, nav, main, aside, etc. Okay, so those are elements that are defined, they're predefined. And when we go to style them in our style sheet, all we have to do for our selector is name those things. But sometimes we want to do some custom things. And those usually are, they appear inside of what's called a div or a division in our code. So for example, if we wanted to change the color of our header, we could do that by putting an inline style, but we could also just put a div around that h1, okay? So this is all it is, just a div tag like this, okay? And we could wrap that around our h1. Now, we could style this. We could style it inline right here, and we'll just say style equals color, and let's choose it a red so it really pops out of there, okay? Crimson is good. And a semicolon. So if I save that and we look at our page, you see our, our H1 is now red because we have a div wrapped around that H1. And the order of precedent says that we, anything that's in line, supersedes anything else outside of it. Okay. Now we could also take that out of the div, right? And we could go into our styles and we could target that. Okay. We're targeting that element div curly braces color crimson okay and now when we look at it we see that it works as well it, it targets from their external style sheet it targets the div so you don't use divs like this divs are used throughout your document and they're used with things called ids and classes so we're going to get rid of this altogether for now. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our index. And inside of our div, we are going to determine a class. Okay, let's start with that. Class equals red text. What happens, what we do with that is we go to our style sheet and we have to target something called red text. And the way we identify a class is with a dot in front of it okay red text it's like targeting an element except we, we created it we can call it whatever we want okay so now i'm gonna do the curly braces as usual type in color and grab that uh crimson again save and as you can see it turns our header red just like before now classes are used to do things to text throughout a document. So let me demonstrate how else this can work. So we have a class red text right here. Let's say in our first paragraph, we wanted to use a class for just this paragraph tag. Okay, so we can type in class equals red text. Okay, so then it'll apply that class also to that paragraph. So let's go see how that looks. See that? So all that, all the paragraph in the aside has now been modified with this class red text. And so it's great to use throughout your document. You can use classes more than once. Now IDs are another thing. They're very similar. They're like custom elements that you can style, but they're used once. What we're gonna do to add an ID that's used only once is we're gonna wrap something around our whole document to sort of contain it. Okay, so we use that div element again, and we take the closing div and we, we're going to put it all the way at the bottom. So you notice we started here just inside of the body. And before the closing body tag, we're going to put the closing div tag. Okay. Let's make sure this aligns. So that closing div tag is at the bottom, right before the body. And the opening one is at the top. So it wraps around everything that's inside of our body. And we're going to use that ID attribute and we're gonna set it equal to wrapper. This is a typical name for the thing that wraps around your document, wrapper. Some people call it a container. 
but we can call it anything we want. So I'll save this and I'll go to my styles. And in the styles, we're going to add that ID here. Now, a class starts with a dot, but an ID starts with a hashtag. So ID wrapper, and I can put the curly braces. Now, typically what we do is we give it a width that controls how wide all that content is, and I'll just make it 80%. So it'll be 80% of the browser, semicolon, save. Let's see how that looks. No matter how wide I make this, it's staying 80% of the browser width. And actually, because I, I've uh, defined these all these elements to be a particular width, it's not really changing. But I can also come down here, and I can make this centered in the browser. And here's the trick for that. It's using the margin property. And we just type zero auto, zero auto. The way that works is the margin property starts at the top and then goes to the right, bottom, and then left, kind of like a clock. So it's saying zero pixels from the top and the bottom and automatically decides how many pixels from the left and the right. So it looks like it's centers it. Let's look at how that looks. So no matter how wide I make my browser window, you can see it's, it's just staying right there. All right, so if we were to um, start changing some things like in, in the header, you know, we can make it 100% now because it's not going to go all the way across. It's just going to stay in that 80. It's going to stay in that uh, in that 80% width. So I'll copy that. My nav is also going to be 100%. My main is going to be 100%. My aside is going to be less than that. I think it was 25%. My section is going to be... Um, this is 75%. My footer is going to be that 100%. Okay, and I don't have any more uh, percent driven widths. So I'll save that and you can see what it looks like now. So you can see now my content is staying centered in the browser, but it's really adapting to the width of my browser, which is nice when you look at it on different devices. So I really prefer when I'm using the width property to identify some various uh, percent widths. All right, so that's how those are used. A class can be used multiple times throughout your document. An ID is used one time. And typically what people will do with IDs is they'll identify some different sections of the document they only use one time. In this case, we're just wrapping something around the entire document to keep its width in control and the margins a zero auto, zero auto to center that browser. So I hope this was helpful for understanding how to create some custom CSS, some custom selectors using divs and using class and ID. Have a good day.